you know, I've always been really aware that, you know, I could be a caregiver or he could be a caregiver and we better take care of ourselves. Welcome to the Evolving Past Alzheimer's podcast. We are focused on bringing you information to help prevent from developing and improve from suffering with brain diseases like Alzheimer's and other dementias. I'm Dr. Nate Bergman, a physician and chief scientific wellness officer at Kemper Cognitive Wellness, and I'll be your guide on these sound waves. So whether you're a baby boomer who's worried that your brain wiring just isn't working like it once was, or you have a loved one with the disease, or you yourself have already been diagnosed and are wondering, what do I do now? You'll want to listen to this podcast. Each episode, we introduce you to the top doers and thinkers that are revisioning Alzheimer's, dementia, and just generally things in life's second half. If you have questions or comments, check us out on social media. To support us, go to patreon.com forward slash evolving past and consider hitting the button and becoming a patron of this show if you find these episodes valuable. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com forward slash evolving past. So here we go. Let's get better. Welcome back to the show. Uh, I have some special guests this week. Uh, a lot of times we talk with researchers and um, doctors all over the country, but more of you are telling me we want a human story. We want uh, like an actual patient encounter. Uh, and this week, even though we don't have uh, someone with Alzheimer's, we had someone with a very, very significant brain injury. I want to introduce you to George uh, uh, Muller and his wife, Betsy, uh, who um, George is my patient. Betsy works at Kemper House um, as the dog therapy lady, uh, among other things. She's also um, the uh, author of a couple of uh, Amazon bestselling books, Energy Makeover and The Comeback, which we'll probably end up talking about. But I really, I just wanted to bring on some people that have experience um, doing the work. And it's not easy, uh, but being injured, uh, being sick, and uh, having having good outcomes, right? And um, some for some reason, it's still easier to get people that had traumatic brain injury uh, or uh, something like that on the show versus someone with Alzheimer's. Right? So there's still quite a bit of stigma that we're trying to sort of dissolve. We're trying to be another voice in the sea of voices that is trying to dissolve some of the stigma around mental illness, around uh, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, et cetera. But anyways, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, George and Betsy, for being with us. You're welcome. Great to be here. I, I really, um, I think it's, it's, you guys have such a compelling story, uh, both from George's side and, and Betsy's side. And um, can you just kind of describe where you were at, what you were doing before a brain injury, what happened, and then kind of what, what ensued? And we'll, we'll get into it that way. Yeah. So should I go? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, George made the decision to retire from a very stressful job at the age of, what, 57, I think, at my urging. Um, we're both- You're working at the NFL. Yeah. NFL he, he, marketing? Yes. Yeah. So Cleveland he Browns, was the okay. marketing director uh, for the Cleveland Browns. And, you know, long days, weekends, lots of last minute uh, stressful stuff, didn't sleep really well, didn't eat very well. And I thought, this guy's heading for a heart attack. He needs to slow down. And so, you know, we had carefully planned for retirement and we looked at the numbers and it looked good. So I said, George, you know what? Tell the Browns you're done there. Why don't you be a lacrosse coach? Because you always wanted to do that and that'll keep you busy and and uh, do that. So he made a, a dramatic change in his life by going to do that. And he had a lot more time. So he just started working out all the time. He lost a bunch of weight. He thought he was in the best shape of his life and you know we then mysterious things started happening around the I, I think not too long after he retired he had a few incidents of passing out after a significant workout and we passing out after significant uh, workouts <laughs> yeah like yeah. He, and how old were you at the time george how old were you at the time 56 56 57 yeah. i mean yeah. it was right after That's, he retired yeah. that this all started happening and it was, and you know, it, it he, was compo compounded by uh, some situations that led up to it because uh, I would do things like, you know, uh, we would we would be drinking the night before and then wake up early and then I would go out running without you know, hydrating, without hydrating. <laughs> you know, and you we know, know that's not good. It's not a really good. But still, people shouldn't go into cardiac arrest 
the the next day just because they ran. But, you know, now what I know is binge drinking and dehydration can contribute to cardiac events and problems with yeah. blood pressure and, and um, blood flow you know, and it can yeah, an injury it, right, but, all over the body. But, you know, it, he went to the doctor, he had all the tests done, they couldn't figure out what was wrong. And so he continued to work out really hard. And, you know, I think it had the doctors followed up a little more rigorously. I had a surgery, so I wasn't on his case to follow up because I couldn't walk for four months, which was my own thing, but it, it interfered. So what eventually ended up happening, you know, we're all happy we go on a vacation to Michigan and, you know, we had a day, a, a wonderful day of vacation, but there was some binge drinking. I'll admit that, both of us. And the next morning he got up real early and probably didn't hydrate enough and went running and it was hot. And he went down and fortunately a young lady saw him laying there. I was on a high school track. So thank God he went to a public place to do his running that day. Yeah, um, right. And she had a cell phone. She called 911. She gave him CPR and the squad came, but they took a while to get there. They think he went, you know, he was on the CPR for maybe seven or eight minutes. And we don't, you know, everybody's sense of time is gone. So what, by the time the squad came, they I think it was five to seven shocks and wow. they got a pulse and they took it. So they put the pads on, your heart is basically stopped. You go through this massive yeah. cardiac arrest. And they put the pads on you and they're shocking you five, six, seven times before you're revived or resuscitated. And they yeah. get a, you know, the, the right. beep starts again on the, on the, the ECG lead or the EKG lead. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so then from there, I mean, I didn't even know where he was. He was missing. I had to call the police and mm. find out where he was. Um, I was, I was concerned knowing the history of how he had gone down after running a couple other times. But they only had my room key, right? That's all they had. Well, they had your Fitbit and room Fitbit. key. He had no ID on him because he was out running. But sure. fortunately, we were in a small town. They told me he was on his way to uh, Holland, Michigan Hospital. And, and so my friends got us, got me in a car and our innkeeper actually got us to the hospital, waited a long time in the ER to even get any news. And when they approached me, finally to tell me what was up, he, they said they weren't sure they were getting any sick, you know, his eyes were not responding to light. He was on a ventilator and they decided to put, to cool him down, to give him the best chance of possibly coming back. So that was the beginning of a very intense time for the two of us, followed by, you know, weeks in the ICU. He didn't come out of that cooling very well. He came out and then he had seizures. And uh, and so that was followed by eventually coming back to Cleveland for weeks and months of rehabilitation in specialized hospitals. Um, so he was kind of like an infant uh, for a good long time. No speech. Couldn't With a pretty anything. profound uh, brain injury. Yeah. No speech. What else? Well, he couldn't walk, he, and he had lost probably about 40-some pounds. He was very weak wow. from being, you know, because he, he didn't Bas have any Basic food. daily functions I just couldn't even manage. Yeah, yeah they basically usually say, you know, this is very inaccurate, rough, but they basically say for every day you spend in a hospital bed, you know, just laid out, certainly an ICU may even accelerate this, it'll take at least two days of recovery or more. It depends, you know, on, on the – but, like, so you're – you're out and you're in the ICU for a month, like weeks, uh, almost a month, and then presumably in the hospital for a little bit longer, and then go to specialty rehabilitation hospitals, which you and I have you know, talked about certainly a couple of times already. And um, so what's like the total amount of time we're talking about for some of the, for the rehab here? So the event occurred on June 10th. He finally came home, although he was not completely independent, but he was able to come home Labor Day. So the whole summer, basically, we, he was in... Oh. The hospital and uh i mean he every but every step of the way they said everything was remarkable all uh, like from where he started to where they, he ended they would up. allow me to come home on weekends on occasion yeah but really and even after that then he continued outpatient rehab uh at southwest general for i don't know probably another two months yep 
Um, and he was under the care of a neurologist, obviously. And uh, yeah. so, yeah. but by December, okay. he got his driving license back. And by January, yeah. he was coaching. That coaching. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 so this, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, what were you going to say, George? Not coaching? No, I, I went back into coaching. I didn't miss a season, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's great. That, that's, oh, that's what great. matters, right? Yeah. It's a guy. Now, if you have to, <laughs> if a, it's a, certainly a sports thing. Yeah. Um, so, what are the? Uh, I mean, I'm interested in in your thoughts about kind of what you've learned about brain health, brain resilience. You know, you guys are still pretty young. Um, what have, What did you guys you guys learn? You know. Well, I, we just finished reading Dr. Gupta's book about, have you read that book about Keep Sharp? Familiar with it. I haven't read the whole thing, but so I, I've definitely I um, like. I love that book. So I would highly recommend it to anybody that just wants to stay sharp. You know, we were only in our 50s when this happened and we had planned for retirement. We thought, you know, we even had long-term care insurance. We thought we were all set. But I did have in the back of my mind, I was worried about him because he played football. He was He's had multiple concussions. So I knew all along that, that's a risk factor. His dad passed from Alzheimer's. My mom has Alzheimer's or some form of dementia. So, you know, I've always been really aware that, you know, I could be a caregiver or he could be a caregiver and we better take care of ourselves. But right. Gupta's book is great because he, he, he focuses in on five pillars. And I think we're doing all the five pillars now based on what we know. And the first one's moving. We've always been exercise nuts. So we actually we still exercise both of us daily. We we probably are maybe over exercisers. I got to slow him down sometimes, but we love exercising and we do it together, which is the connector exercise, which mm -hmm. I understand is really good for your brain. The more I learn, like walking with other people, right. and talking, and dancing with somebody, um, that's what I'm learning can even upgrade your exercise. So that's a little tip for your people. And the other thing is we're learning. You know, like I'm a teacher, I, 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 you know, have courses online now, so I'm teaching people, but actually when you teach, you learn, we take, we do the, the New York times quiz together every, every week weekend, on yeah. Saturday. That's kind of like our challenge, but we, it's a team effort. We do very well on that. And, uh, our, um, you know, we've, we try to mix things up. So we go to new places to hike. Like that's and our take challenge. Take the dog with us. Take yeah. the dog, but we don't go to the same place over and over again anymore. We're like, oh, where's a good park? And and I even put it on social media and people give us suggestions. So just, just to awaken our sense changing your again. environment, yeah. especially during COVID, when you can go outside, we even walk in the rain. We, we, yeah. We've gotten very active in spite of our, our things. I got him meditating. Here's So relax is another one of the pillars. Yeah. We're both really good at sleeping since he retired. He he made a good switch with yeah, without the without the added stress of work. Uh, you know, sleeping is no longer a problem, and you know, no longer wake up in the middle of the night with indigestion like I used yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. But the meditation is new. I didn't think I could get him to sit in a chair with me every morning. We do ten minutes. We use Insight Timer, and we just put in the nature sounds with the yeah. water and the birds. And usually the cat and dog come in now because they like our soundtrack, and and we just go off into La La Land and <laughs> and uh, I'm not well, I want to stop. So can you just briefly explain Inside Timer? Just can you briefly yeah. just kind of it's, it's explain a Inside free Timer app. for people that are not familiar? Yeah, it's a free app on your phone, so you can get it on your iPhone, and you can you can get guided meditations, or you can just listen to sounds. But you're basically picking an amount of time, and you hit the timer, and it plays the the recording or we just listen to ambient pleasant sound in the background and it gives you a, ton, a chime when you're done and it helps it gives you like every day it'll say oh you did 100 days in a row or you did 111 days so it, you know it encourages you yeah. encourages you to continue it reminds you to do it but it's very pleasant absolutely i mean i uh, first of all i love the fact that you did together you know i um that's that's rare. You know, we're 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 focusing a lot. You know, Kepler Cognitive Wellness, where I work, we're we're really focusing more and more on. Um, you know, we see people that are trying to prevent Alzheimer's. We see people that are like just starting to have mild symptoms, but are concerned because somebody in the family might have it, or they might have a genetic risk. And then, um, you know, we certainly see a good number of people that already have really extensive 
disease, yeah. right? The Alzheimer's yeah. or some other kind of dementia. And as you know, even though your story, George, is like a, you know, sort of a happy ending, if, if I can say, for people that have intractable uh, Alzheimer's, there are things that we can do. You know, we can sort of brighten people up and make life better so we can kind of live, live well mm -hmm. uh, or live better uh, with dementia. Um, and, but one thing that we've been hearing from the caregivers uh, of these folks that, that have Alzheimer's or other dementias is that when it's just irritability, I mean, the, it's sort of unrelenting stress from mm -hmm. some, from, from some perspectives and COVID certainly didn't help that at all because people are um, basically bottled up or stuck, right? In, in, when they're used to be able to have a break or somebody else could come over and, you know, these things are starting to lift a little bit now uh, with vaccines and whatnot. But one thing that we've been hearing uh, from a few folks that are willing to do the insight timer or breathing or meditation or some of the tapping exercises that mm -hmm. we've ended up, end up talking about um, is that they just noticed that the day's a little better. It's a little easier, a little less irritable, a little less, you know, a little less snappy and um, just a, a little bit more compassion. And yeah. so even even at 10 minutes, 10 minutes is the number. I know the dose is sort of recommended 20 minutes twice a day, but that's a that's a hard uh, that's a hard number for a lot of people to get to, especially if they're coming into um, meditation in their 40s, 50s, 60s or 70s or, or 80s, perhaps. Um, so, so I think it's important that you guys, um, you mentioned that's so interesting. Well, I, we do one I, more thing in the morning after we meditate, we get up and we do um, Eden Energy Medicine, the five minute morning routine. And that is a combination of tapping on acupoints and left, right brain um, exercises that, I don't know, they just kind of prime you for the day. I, I've always been recommending it to my clients and it seems to lift people a little bit up out of that depressed low state. Um, and it doesn't hurt. What is the Eden Energy? Well. Pro, like, what is that? Eden Energy Medicine. I can so tell, so you explain a little bit. Yeah. Ex um, so Donna Eden is the founder of Eden Energy Medicine, and um, she's somebody who studied um, energy kinesiology. She had MS at one point in time, and she was very curious about, I guess, helping herself get better. And so, I think she can see how. Energy moves. I mean, it, it gets a little woo woo when we talk about what she does, but the activities, like one of the activities, is just to cross uh, across your body with the hands, and you know that gives a left right signal. And actually, for a partner to do that across a partner's back or somebody with Alzheimer's, even I will suspect that that would help them feel better. And you know, it's it's light touch, but at the same time, it activates their left right awareness response too. So, so how long would somebody need to do that? Um, maybe uh, to see if they were. It, it takes less than five minutes to do the routine. We do it really quickly and then we finish it with a kiss every morning. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, and uh, Donna, Donna Eden and her, and her husband, um, David Feinstein yeah. wrote the foreword on our book because we got in touch with them. They have a book called The Energies of Love about how you can do things together uh, to keep keep your... I, I guess your relationship vital by doing some some simple exercises. So, so we like that exercise time together. It's very quick. It's easy. And the thing is, when he was going through the brain injury and coming back from it, he his sequencing was not real good. Like yeah. he could only remember a couple things at exactly. a time. Yeah. And so, to teach him a routine that had a multiple steps and changes of moves, and you had to count during it and stuff. It helped him get this orderly memory back in, but it was it was physical, you know, that we would do together. So eventually he was reminding me what I forgot in the routine because sometimes I've, I'll skip something. <laughs> so anyway, it's a good little connector and it makes you feel good. It really does. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, we've had a few. So your story is brain injury as a result of heart condition. And I, um, I, I'm, I'm curious to know what what's... Uh, what kind of surprised you the most um, as you continue to explore the connections between heart and brain? Uh, I mean, there's there's certainly um, more and more and more that I'm reading the literature. I mean, it's been there for a while. Um, there are heart-brain institutes around the world. Uh, Cleveland Clinic had one uh, for a long time. 
I'm just curious in your own, because you have a little bit different perspective here. Um, I don't know. If, we should let him say first and maybe. No, you the, go yeah. first. No? Yeah. Well, I'm more the science geek. Yeah. I like, you know, I work with people with stress and with heart-brain coherence. A lot of the work that I do is a EFT tapping practitioner. But there's this polyvagal the- theory, <laughs> you know about, you know, this vagus nerve that kind of connects our, our brain to the rest of our body and how we can entrain with another person when we have a connection. So I, I often wonder, because my heart brain uh, and my heart rate variability is very much calm. And I, you know, I, I practice these things to keep myself in this coherent state, which means you're your vagus nerve has good tone <laughs> and it, it means your kind of your brain and your heart are syncing together. And you can, if one person is in sync, the person that's near them in relationship to them gets a benefit. You know what I'm talking about, right? That, totally. That, yeah. And you know, yeah. it happens in a good relationship with the doctor and a patient. It happens in a loving marriage. It happens between a teacher and a child. I mean, it's it's human connection. And that's part of the brain that I think we're also in, encouraged to really engage more often, to have this caring, kind, loving relationship or whatever you want to call it, where you're not alone. And actually, it's the cure for trauma of any kind, you know, that you're, you have something beyond yourself to reflect and to connect to. Yeah, I mean, I so this is a good point. This is an important point because I kind of, no matter what stage someone is in life, um, and I, you know, I see this mostly seeing adults, but, you know, we have kids and we've all been uh, through adolescence and, you know, there's, there's no end to the sort of challenges in life at every stage, whether you're, you know, sort of beginning, middle, or in that sort of second half, last third of life. I'm curious to know, though, you know, you engage with us as a patient at the Camp for Cognitive Wellness, and, um, you know, we, we make a lot of recommendations, and some of the things are, are hard, you know, they're hard to do, um, and that's, we, we often hear this with a kind of a functional medicine approach, or the kind of approach that we're taking is, um, you know, it's just asking a lot. I just got finished seeing some patients that, you know, just basic exercise, basic dietary changes are hard, and, um, and they're facing uh, they're already in the throes of a, you know, in their mid to late seventies in the throes of Alzheimer's. Um, and what have you guys found that is kind of been easier? What's <laughs> been more challenging? Like, you know, because I think hearing how you relate to it as someone who's, you know, basically four years out or something from the, mm-hmm. um, from the initial brain injury, um, and like, how do you how do you describe to people if you're trying to get them to do the work right? What's easy? What's challenging? How to deal with some of those challenges? Because whether you're working a full time job, dealing with kids, uh, dealing with adult children, or you know parents that are ailing, or you yourself or a loved one is, is starting to have issues, I mean, there's always going to be challenges. But like, how do you think about that? How do you? What's your kind of framework for thinking about that? Well, I th- I think if I had to say the ch- the biggest challenge for you is probably diet. Yes. Would you right, say? Right. But I will say that ever since we came to visit you and we mm-hmm. met with Nikki, right? Yeah. Yes. And mm-hmm. I took that, I took that wholeheartedly. I took that straight up and I knew I was going to buy into it. And I think, I think it's worked remarkably well. I mean, I think, I mean, Betsy can attest to. Well, the biggest change, if you recall, is he was almost diabetic. He was pre-diabetic yeah. when you saw the him. Sodas. And Remember he was the drinking sodas. soda and he was drinking yeah. straight juice. Welch's grape juice and orange juice. Like he, like it was, there was no tomorrow. So what Very do you drink more of now? Yeah, I'm like 80, 75% <laughs> water. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I don't, he probably drinks less alcohol now too. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Maybe one we're or two of... beers. I average like one and a half beers a week. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I guess the other thing that, that might have helped, you know, we're trying to do more seafood and I'm the only shopper since we've been in COVID too, because we're trying to limit our risk. So I go to Heinen's by myself. And, and so he can't throw stuff in the cart anymore. Like he, he, oh, well, he used to go out behind yeah. my back and keep, <laughs> he used to keep stuff in his car because he didn't want me to know. 
that he was yeah. eating, you know. Yeah, I would say oh, yeah. coffee cakes yeah. from Entenmann's and little yeah. cherry pies and all this stuff that sure. sort of didn't help. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, the sort of the, the alleys and alcoves and every place in, um, in, in, in most of these grocery stores is filled with hostess or Entenmann's or, you know, something else. That's just, temptations, um, yeah. yeah. Temptations everywhere. Well, we, right. You know, we still have sugar once in a while, but it's like our special thing. Like I'll make a little sure. chocolate thing on, a, oh, yeah. on date night because we have date night on Saturday night, even though we can't go anywhere. We stay home and have a good dinner and watch Escape to the Chateau. We'll recommend that show yeah. here too. We love yeah. that show on HGTV. It's another nice. creative thing for your brain, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so thank you. And, and then, um, so you, you, I think there's a point of emphasis, the point that I would emphasize on, on the challenging stuff is, look, I mean, there are people that are working on changing things their whole life, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's weight loss or it's getting angry or it's dealing with depression or, you know, wh- whatever it is, you know, um, spending more time with the people they care about most. Um, everybody's got things everybody that's working on something has been working on it for a long time. You know, sometimes things seem to, to move easier. I I'm able to, Oh yeah, of course I could sleep more. I didn't think about this. Or of course I could add in some exercise because I used to exercise all the time and now I'm, you know, but, um, s- slow change, right? Slow change. You didn't have to go perfect. You're just drinking a bunch of, of soda. And, and you guys have talked about the alcohol piece, uh, and then kind of slowly working on that with support, with education, with follow up, with ongoing, you know, sort of ongoing, and I, I would. Some people will benefit from groups, also, mm-hmm. you know, from groups, from doing this this kind of work in groups. So, I think um, taking the long view. I think it's no secret anymore that change is iterative. Um, that it's okay. I'll start here. I'll make a change, I'll, and I'll see what happens, and we can change again. And if we look at, you know, almost from a Zen perspective, that like nothing, the only thing that is constant is change. That's mm-hmm. right. Uh, and then things going to be the same um, uh, tomorrow as it was today. Uh, and it's a, it's a little easier to deal with those changes because it's not like, you know, because if people say, oh, I'm never going to be able to have this again. I'm never going to be able to do this again. Or people go out and they have a bunch of um, junk food the day before they come see us because they, we know they, oh, I know you're going to tell me I can never have such whatever it is again. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, it, first of all, it's not all or nothing. And it's, it's, and it, it seems like such common sense uh, and everybody kind of knows it, but then, when you're the one that's got to do it for a compelling reason, like get better from a brain injury perspective, not get diabetes, not develop Alzheimer's, whatever it's going to be, um, it feels different, right? It like feels totally different. And um, uh, just uh, allowing space for a little bit slower change, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to take months, yeah. months, sometimes years mm-hmm. to make some changes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So at this point, um, I mean, maybe you, what advice do you have um, for couples, uh, people that are kind of struggling out there who might be concerned about um, new diagnosis, uh, particularly if they're related to the brain and, um, and kind of keeping their brain as healthy as they can, mm-hmm. uh, given what we all we just said? Yeah. Well, I definitely recommend Dr. Gupta's book. I think that's a good place to start for people. And, and I, I would have them watch or listen to your other podcasts. Your podcasts, Nate, are, are wonderful. And well, maybe even schedule an appointment with you because I know um, <laughs> some people probably wonder, did why did I make an appointment with with Dr. Bergman if everything was so good? Well, actually, it wasn't so good because George got all better. He came home and he proceeded with life and coaching as if nothing happened. And Actually, he was taking some beta blockers, and I noticed over time that he was regressing. He was not. And beta blockers are a medication for heart, right? Just so you right. slow, and they slow down the heart a little bit. everything down. And George, you know, has a very slow heart rate anyway as a, an athlete. And this, those medications were of concern to me because he, it took away his personality. It took away his ability to be sharp. He's, I was just telling him today, he used to let the dog out in the winter and forget the dog was out there. He would leave doors mm-hmm. open. I would come in like the re- refrigerator would be open. And I'm thinking, holy cow, you know, we came so far and this is happening. And um, I was so glad we got him in to see you because I think one of the benefits is that you have 
this balance to look at the bigger picture of medicine. It's not one size fits all. Just because the cardiologist says this is the amount of beta blocker for you. Yeah, I think that, over time yeah. there was a dramatic change. Yeah, and after that, and meeting. so you were able to negotiate and adjust that that amount of that med, and also recommend it at night instead of during the day. Yeah. And you know, because it's okay if he's a little down while he's sleeping, but not while he's while he's up with me. And you got mm-hmm. him on some good supplements too, mm-hmm. which I think he still doesn't eat perfectly. So we got to make sure that he gets his turmeric and, and other things like that, and his CoQ10, you know, those things that make a difference for his cardiac health based on the other meds he's taking. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I think all of us deserve the best of care and also integrative, you know, like I'm not on any prescription meds, but yet, um, you know, being around you and, and your organization helps me know um, I, I guess that I'm doing other things and maybe I won't have to be, but you know, I, my world is bigger because we keep learning through you and yeah. your organization. And I actually, we've done some of your webinars, some of your, um, your brain fitness boot camp. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. That was yeah. cool. I'd never really seen that before. And, uh, the brain boot camp. Yeah. yeah. The brain boot camp is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I really like that you offer all those things. We haven't had your brain tested or anything, but I think you're okay now, <laughs> but I'm watching you. Always you. Retest I'm, you. Watching him. You know, I'm always then, doing, doing, uh, uh, exercise. I, I, yeah go on lumina- Lumosity a bunch of times, you know, every, regularly. And then uh, I also tapped into ALZU.org. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, for sure. I, I do all the exercises so. and, and testing on that too. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know he was doing that. I just found that out today. <laughs> and he does oh, the really? jumble every day. Hey, jumble. That's kind of lame. The, That's kind of well, easy. But still, he's really good at it. So he might as well. He enjoys it. So whatever. Amazing. Yeah, the only thing I would recommend too, uh, in addition to what she's Betsy said, is that you know if you're fortunate enough to have a great partner, I would I would recommend you take it on as a as a team approach. Okay, uh, hopefully you can uh, uh, draft that person <laughs> and go wholeheartedly into it together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But actually yeah. working with you and Nikki, because I, I knew all the stuff about nutrition, but coming from me, it's like, no, I don't yeah. want to do that. But, you know, Nikki's so nice. And she sat down with him and oh, yeah. gave, gave him some ideas. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it helped coming from an outside source. Yeah. That, that Amazing. Okay. Well, I really appreciate your time today, guys, um, so much. And I, I'm sure that there's been there's been a lot of useful nuggets and energy medicine and EFT tapping and um, George just dropped some knowledge and all of you, uh, Dr. Richard Isaacson's uh, um, website that uh, really is really pretty good for Alzheimer's, very comprehensive. So thank you for joining us and uh, all the best. Hopefully see you soon. And please have people read our book. Um, oh, they come back. Yeah, show that book again. Show, show that book. Yeah. Can I see that show book? Okay. It's okay. called okay. The Comeback. It's by Betsy. And uh, the the audio book is out out on Audible now too, which is in yeah. our voices. So, uh, oh, very cool! Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So cool. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. Okay, guys, all the best. Thank you. So that's our episode. I hope it was useful to you. Check out the show notes on iTunes or on our website where we've summarized the key points. If you find the information here valuable, please consider giving us a five-star rating on iTunes and leaving comments in the comments section. It will really help us bring this message to as many people as we can. If you have questions or comments, connect with us on social media. Finally, to support us, go to patreon.com forward slash evolving past and consider hitting the button and becoming a patron of this show. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com forward slash evolving past. Thanks. I'll talk to you next time.